I'm Mike Mayers, and I'm a cinematographer. If you look on IMDb, what I'm best well known for is The West Wing, which I shot the last two seasons of. Took over from a fabulous DP named Tom Del Ruth. I was living on the East Coast, and they scooped me up from, from Washington, D.C., and dropped me on the West Wing set and said, okay, you're the DP, and I was like, oh my God, really? Oh, okay. As a kid, I did a lot of theater. And that was great because again, it's you know there's there's a lot of overlap. So you know if you know how the theater lights work, the film lights are pretty similar. And I was a still photographer a little bit professionally, and so that obviously you know that's an obvious overlap. And so those two things between still photography and the theater lighting, I had pretty good foundation. I you know just started shooting, and you know with my friends who were you know we figured it out as we went along, which was great. Um, because it was all down and dirty, you know, like on the streets of New York. My gaffer back then was a, a young guy, and who, he had a great battle cry, which is, my work's not done until all the lights are pointed at the lens. We did some great, you know, horror films with a lot of backlight kind of thing. Just with that in your head, you can really go pretty far. So if there's a window, I'll work through the window first. If there's a lamp, I'll, you know, I'll imitate the lamp. Then you can look at your, look at your character and go, oh, we need a little key light. And then you can, you know, add a little something to, you know, to add a little key light as needed. But basically, you just spend a lot of time with your eye, you know, resting on the eyepiece, looking at that shot and kind of going, you know, more or less, more of this, more of that. And it's, uh, you know, it's like making soup. You know, I was a great fan of Storaro, so I was, you know, carefully studied Storaro's work. And that, you know, that was great because he's a real hard light guy. Um, <clears throat> and you can't always do that, but it was a great, it was great to study that. And then I could, you know, start to understand how soft light worked because it, it's, it's similar, but you have to, you just have to understand the difference between hard and soft. And then Gordon Willis, of course, is another, you know, can't go wrong with Gordon Willis. Yeah, if you want to know about underexposure, you can watch The Godfather. That's always good. I still own a couple of Atons. I still have a couple of 16 millimeter cameras sitting in my container, but mostly digital, yeah. I did the first ever broadcast uh, hour-long network drama in digital, which was called Max Bickford, and it was way back on the East Coast, and it was a brutal experience, but it actually worked out okay. Although I do remember at the rap party standing there with Richard Dreyfus and having him turn to me and say, let's not ever do that again. And I was like, well, I have a feeling it's coming at us. Richard can stick with film, but I, I feel pretty comfortable in both film and video these days. Well, for TV, I tend to be on Zooms all the time. I've started as a documentary guy, so for years, you know, I shot for National Geographic and Discovery and people like that. And I'm just so used to having a camera on my shoulder and a Zoom lens, or, or a, a couple of them. That's how I feel most expressive with a camera, so that's what I do. For features, um, Sometimes I'll do, I'll go all primes or mostly primes. I actually have a soft spot for the old super speeds, interestingly. And when I was starting out as a DP, those were the lenses that you could afford for a low budget feature. And so those are the ones I use. So the quality of those lenses is very familiar and it's something that I'm very confident working with. Although the, I do like the cooks also, so I'll sometimes go out with a set of cooks. The thing that I would like to be able to do is bring a very specific look with me. And sometimes I do that with a trick involving the lens. The other important thing that DPs do is become the crutch that gets the film made. So, like if I have a friend who's a director and he's going, oh, I don't know whether I can do this or not. I'm like, dude, of course you can do it. Of course we can do it, you know? This could be amazing. It's like directors oftentimes and producers need to know from a technical perspective that yes, this can be, can be done. And as a DP, you know, I'm very happy to put my stamp on something that I feel like, okay, we can do this, ka-chunk. But then you have to be, you have to be right. It's like, you can't let, you're not allowed to be wrong at that. You have to, you know, deliver. And you have to be able to say yes to things that you can deliver on. And you have to be able to gracefully back out or gracefully say, let's find a different way when something is not really appropriate. Well, when I was back East, I did features. I've had like six films at Sundance over the years. The other thing that's notable is I did David O. Russell's first feature, which was called Spanking the Monkey. That's a wild one. And then I've just basically gone, you know, from series to series since, since then. I uh, did Brothers and Sisters for a while, uh, Mixology, and then uh, Murder in the First the last couple of years. Murder in the First is a police procedural. 
Um, it starred Tay Dig and Kathleen Robertson as, you know, a couple of cops in San Francisco. But it's basically just kind of a straight ahead cop show with a certain amount of night work and a bunch of day work and trying to make Los Angeles look like San Francisco, which is a real trick. The feel of the exteriors had to match the feel of our interiors. So we had back, you know, good backdrops made and stuff like that. But again, it was like a lot of, you know, huge windows and a lot of backlight coming from those windows and, you know, which is a great look. It's a very rich, powerful look, which it seemed right for our episode, for our show. You know, I had a great production designer to work with and that helps. Oh, and then the other great thing is that we had a great technical advisor up in, a retired detective up in San Francisco who took us all around the uh, municipal building up there and we got to see everything. And so that gave us a great reference. You know, I have a thousand photos of like what the evidence room looks like and all the crazy stuff that the detectives deal with. And, you know, that became kind of the style book that we would always refer to. I'm not sure that everybody understands how that works in television, but a new director comes in every episode, and those guys, uh, men or women, are usually hired just for that episode. I mean, sometimes you'll have a staff director who does, you know, a handful in the course of a season, you know, and sometimes, you know, one of the actors will get to direct one, or I'll get to direct one, something like that. Because you have a new director every week, a big part of the job is, is you know, maintaining the style of the show. It's very important for the DP on TV to be able to you know, have the director's confidence to say, oh yeah, so we need, we need this angle over here because we always go to that kind of a low, interesting angle or whatever it is. And the directors are usually, you know, expect that because, you know, these poor, you know, the working directors who are jumping from show to show all the time, they land on some set and they're sitting, you know, in a chair like this next to somebody who's their DP and it's like you have to have, you know, a trust relationship. And so, you know, myself and the other TV DPs, I think, are all have that trustworthiness and have the, you know, have the ability to like carry the look of the show forward. It was mostly stage based, although we would occasionally go up to San Francisco, which was always fun. That's kind of a typical problem with a rental house is that we go, oh, wait a minute, now we have a unit working in Los Angeles and we're also sending a unit up to San Francisco and we need a whole, we need a mesh package so that we can work in two places at the same time. And that was always easy, you know, that's like a phone call from me or the producer to Johnny. This is basically like you think working with the same rental house nationwide. It was very easy for Johnny to just say, oh, you're working with Mike, here's what he likes. And you know, there it all was, it's like fantastic. And then all of a sudden, there's a pile of gear and we just, you know, check out another round of cameras and off we go. Johnny Healy, my rental agent, has been, has been working with me for a number of years now. And he's totally on the ball and, you know, he's, he's really, you know, wise in the way of the cameras. So I feel like I'm, you know, I'm talking to somebody who knows what I'm talking about and that's great. Not only does he know, you know, what our camera needs are, but he's also very wise in the ways of production. Like he'll know when the catering truck is going to roll up at our stage. And that's, you know, he times his visit to match that. So that's, that's particularly wise. I mean, the guys who were first in the catering line, they're probably really experienced and they turns out they usually are. I was on a show where I was not happy with the rental house for some reason. And somehow I got over here and I took a walk around and I met some people and I said, all right, let's give it a try. And so I, you know, jumped onto VER halfway through a, a, a series, I think. VER is particularly good at this, but most rental houses understand the, you know, the, the importance of testing. Whenever I'm like, ooh, there's a new lens or there's a new something that I want to work with, you know, I can make a phone call and I'll have a, you know, a place, a rental, a, you know, rental bay standing by and I can parachute in and, you know, do a little test. You know, a lot of times that's how I figure out what I, you know, what I want to work with. But the other thing is that the, you know, the producer has to be happy also. And so far, every, every job I bid out, VER has, you know, you know, comfortably won the bid. So I feel like I'm getting the best of everything. I'm getting the best service, I'm getting the best gear, and I'm getting the best price. That pretty much covers it for me. I was so impressed when I, when I first walked through here because I could see not only camera equipment, but also all the, you know, the video distribution equipment and the big screens and all the other cool stuff that VER does. And it just made me understand that this is a company that is very dedicated to, to doing the best work in their field. You know, I could tell just by walking in the door, these guys have got their eye on a prize and that's who I want to be working with, so that's great.